Welcome to the tips and tricks on how to play Horde in Gears of War 4. Uh, I'm VIP Primo and we have a lot of great content to go over and I hope you enjoy it. As always, if this helps you in any way, I ask that you hit the like button and feel free to share it as well so that others can enjoy it and share in your Horde experience. So let's get on to it. To know about something, you need to know about its history. And Horde started in Gears of War 2. At that time, there were no structures in Horde. You just barred boom shields to defend yourself and you created choke points. It was a great way to earn XP, so when you see someone with one of those legacy emblems, remember salute them as they made it through some very tough times. And yes, I was one of them. Look up the veteran Gears achievement to know our pain. So when Gears 3 came out, it added some awesome support ideas. You could build four command posts and each of those command positions allowed you to build existing potential structures and upgrade them. It also added the Silverback, which was an expensive, mobilized, me mechanized unit, and you could also turn decoys into Onyx Guards, which was tons of fun. So fast forward to Gears 4, and the command post is gone, and in its place is a Fabricator, a machine that allows you to build fortifications, move them around, and with it came a whole new group of challenges. Horde is, by definition, the most advanced way of playing the team multiplayer that Gears was built off of. Horde is simple in its beginning stages and unrelenting at higher levels. It will be hard to recover if you make a bad decision late in the game, so conservative play is advised and unlike Horde in Gears 3 will require you to use those structures to your advantage. So before you dive into Horde, make sure you have some basic skills, most importantly being able to use cover to your advantage and plant grenades, which in the beginning, strategically placed, will be a devastating move. Active reloads are not only something to practice, but some classes get bonuses in the form of cards that increase that bonus. The best way to do that is to play through the campaign on at least normal difficulty or be a veteran horde player. And even the veterans are about to get taught some new lessons, as certainly I did. So even if you have history, try it out on casual and move up. At normal, things change drastically, even for the veterans, and knowing that stupid little stuff will play a key role in your success. The first lesson is the most important one. If you want to have fun, don't play with randoms. In this horde, there are bounty cards that can boost your experience, and some of these complete on wave 10 or 20, which means that once you hit that wave, your newfound friends will go AWOL. So you need some dedicated, dedicated players to go the long haul. The best way to fight horde is to get a team. They should have mics, they should be able to communicate well, and develop working together. If you don't have friends, use the Xbox community feature to search for posts looking for players. They'll throw you into the deep end quick, but that may be just what the doctor ordered. So even if you don't make friends, you'll have ample reinforcements hungry for the fight. I don't want to go over the entire basics of Horde. If you're a poppin' fresh Horde player, you may want to go to an intro video someplace about Horde to go over the real basics. Um, I, I think you know that there's an energy that enemies drop that can be returned to the Fabricator, which allows you to build more defenses. It's pretty simple. So, the trick is getting the most energy, spending the least amount of energy, and making sure every bullet deals maximum damage. That may sound difficult at first, but follow this guide and you'll be well old machine in no time fast. So before you start Horde, you're going to be selecting a class and cards that best work for what you plan to do. Do yourself a favor and don't ignore the bounty spot. I'm not going to argue about bounties, that's a different conversation, but just consider using one. You can thank me later. So now let's review the classes. Obviously this is your first ex Horde experience. What do you pick first? Well, I'll review the easiest classes in order and also the class cards that'll make or break that class. First is a scout. Now, the scout's job is to collect the energy and bring it back to the fabricator. They get a free bonus that during an active round, every energy pickup is doubled. So not only should every team have one, they should be the only person even looking at energy. Anyone can be a scout and they are never lonely on Friday night. And I know there are some people who are going to argue with me on this, but honestly, all you need is that bonus deposit card, which max out means that you'll be depositing two and a half times energy at every visit to the fabricator. And that's not counting other energy bumps. And that could leave your fabricator as an overflowing cup of coffee. That being said, scout is the most important member of your crew. Once they reach level 10, they can be tanks. Even with level three cards, they can run through the enemy offenses like butter, and their best ability is natural, basically giving them a card for free. 
So even if you're not that skilled at cover or shooting, who cares? You can learn on the job. The negatives of the scout is expect to get bossed around from everyone. A good team is keeping an eye on that enemy count, and when it gets to one, maybe before, they'll be commanding you to run into enemy territory like a lemming, and you better be okay with doing it. And that's the last thing. If you quiver and shake in the face of the swarm, don't be a scout. Scouts aren't afraid to get shot, go down, or even give their existence to recover energy that fuels their squad. And let's be honest, it's the fuel that will win or lose these battles. That being said, be nice and give a loose escort to the scout so he can make it back with all that precious energy. The next class is the Heavy. And this is another easy class. He's the third most important member and will take a little more time to make the grade. He's like the big dude at the gym. You know, they pick things up and put them down. Most notably, they pick up turrets and lay down hate on the enemy. In fact, if you're a heavy, get on the engineer to build your turret killing machine as fast as you possibly can. And by the way, nagging is acceptable. Turrets are indeed the ultimate key to success. You are naturally equipped with a boon shot, and even though that's pretty cool, you won't care once you get that turret up and running. In fact, every team usually has two of these bad boys ready to jump behind the big guns and blow stuff up. How do you do that? Two of your most famous cards are turret damage increase and mark damage increase. So even if the enemy decides to up their health, you're already dealing out excessive, and I do mean excessive, turret damage, making a same level horde look like a day of mowing the lawn. So as heavy, you should be good at turret fire. It doesn't hurt to be good to the boom shot either because Hail Mary Ribbons might as well be admitting you're a personal mortal machine. But also, I know you may be tempted to strap on that epic mortar strike card. This just some friendly advice. Don't bother. You'll blow up more bad guys on a turn than you ever will with that mortar, which is why that engineer is your best buddy. You also may be tempted to buy a turret yourself, and the problem is, is the cost associated will be too much, and you're not prepared for the upkeep that bad boy's going to inflict, and it'll be a sad day when it just gets blown up. So forget those building turret cards and focus on what you do best, which is blowing stuff up. Our third guy, which is a little bit harder, kind of a medium rank, is the soldier. Think of the toughest nail stalwart marine. This guy doesn't have any problems walking into the war zone with only hopes and dreams. And they don't get the bonuses of scouts, so they'll have to exclusively rely on cover. They can't deal out the damage of the heavy even with their lancer bonus, yet every team will ask for one and you'll never have a problem volunteering once you're up to speed. Well, why, you might ask? Well, because the soldier has the most effective weapon in Horde, the Hammer of Dawn. Oh yeah, you're the walking apocalypse of Sarah. One flip of the fabricator switch and it's board wipe on an unimaginable scale. You'll be melting bosses like they were snowmen on a hot summer day. And the only problem is that skill isn't about your level or your ability. It's all about you luckily pulling an epic card and spending your life savings and scrap to upgrade it. Even at level 3, it barely does the job, and although people will settle for level 4, they want that level 5 and will handedly dismiss your level 10 soldier for a level 1 soldier with a rank 5 hammer. That means you just spend 3 days maxing out a soldier that nobody wants because of a stupid card. So you may want to leave the soldier on the shelf until you get that maxed out hammer, and trust me, once he gets it, you'll be level 10 before you can say Paddock shoots Marxes in Garanzia. So, <laughs> engineers, and now things are going to get pretty difficult. Uh, it is the second most important and popular cast member on the field, and before you play one, first, take a deep breath. This is going to be a long road, but once you get it down, you get invited to anything and everything. To be a good engineer, you'll need to have a good level with a collection of level 5 cards and also have the multitasking skills of a supercomputer. Uh, during the round, you'll be building and fixing. While the scout is out collecting, you'll be building and fixing. And between rounds, when everyone is waxing their guns, you'll be, yeah, you guessed it, building and fixing. So I'm going to assist you in making your journey a tad shorter, and even then my assistance won't help much with the time it'll take to even get proficient in the class. Your first goal is to make sure you're the only person working on the fabricator, and that fight alone can be a hard one. Turrets are your masterpiece. Get one up and running first and foremost. Two turrets with two moderately good heavies will make your work um, art of a destructive force that will never get you a single thank you for. 
So then you'll construct a fence and make sure the turrets are in good working order. After you've worked so hard your fingers hurt and your legs ache, then you'll get a chance to build something fun that can kill bad guys and your fences will get more kills than the resident soldier. And although you'll still be working hard, you'll be the most loved member of staff. Not to mention, although no one will pin a medal on you, indeed every win rests solely in your hands. So what cards? First get your repair boost card and make sure it is maxed out. Then get the turret reduction cost and max that out. Lastly, you'll need to make sure your fences costs are down, which you take your time with that one. It also doesn't hurt to have the general skill that reduces all round build costs that will put your turret cost in about the same area as how much change you find hidden in your couch pockets. So as you can see, you're already three or four max cards in, so don't expect to have any free scrap lying around. If there is any space left, getting a card that makes your turret stronger or fortification stronger doesn't hurt either, since the longer the turrets stay up, the better chance you'll be taking home a victory. And remember that repairing doesn't upgrade the fabricator, so feel free to sacrifice some decoys to give the fabricators a bump when a lull happens. And if you have a really good scout feeding you a ton of energy, you'll get comfortable with sacrificing some structures for the good of the overall goal. Typical. Don't give the smart guy a promotion. No, no. Give it to a jackass instead. Last class, which is the hardest of all, is the sniper. At first, the sniper seems like the glamorous role. Now, that is until you hit your first fight and you realize you have a worthless weapon, the wrong sidearm, no grenades, and a sniper rifle that is difficult to get on target after round six. And don't bother looking for MVP. Even worse, you sit around waiting to be deployed because, well, nobody likes you. That's right, snipers are not glamorous or popular. In most famous setups, nobody even has them listed as a usable class because honestly, most people who use them suck. To be a good sniper and get invites back, you'll need to be a master shooter, which means only hitting things in the head. You'll also have to be open to switching weapons. For instance, you'll need to pick up grenades, and the second you see some with a bolt hawk, drop them like a bad habit and slide that bad boy into your holster. You'll also have to max out some cards. Increased damage, increased headshot damage, which, by the way, works with all the weapons. Uh, sniper shot and explosive headshots. So I hope you didn't need any of that scrap for anything cool. So if you want to be a sniper, remove the glamour, get ready to work on and off the field. And when you finally get good, you'll have a mountain to overcome to get people to allow you to show off your skills. After all that work, though, once you're sitting on that lawn chair with a joyous sound similar to popping bubble wrap, nobody will doubt that you're not only good, but fun to play with. So once you built your team, it should look like this. One scout, one engineer, two heavies, and a soldier or a sniper. Inevitably, the last three positions can change around a little bit, but the scout and engineer are integral to the team, so don't leave home without them. To put this into context, you need someone who is going to get the energy, someone who's going to use the energy, and two turret warriors, and someone to wipe the board clean when things get out of hand. Oh, and they will get out of hand. Remember that just because there are two people on the heavy, don't be not tempted to build four turrets or even a backup turret to have just in case one gets destroyed because it can happen and anybody can use a turret so feel free to build away. The unspoken class is the medic and no this isn't some new class hidden in the game it's every team member in the team. Sure that X button is easy to use but knowing when to use it is going to be a key role to success and failure especially when that scout is down carrying all your energy. Knowing when to run out into that kill zone isn't something they teach you in horde school either. You'll have to learn it the painfully hard way. And also, one member of the team having the team revive card uh, generally isn't a bad idea either. So once the round started, you'll need a spot for the fabricator. So remember, this is your base. You're not going to have time to move it around. And in fact, 99.99% .99 of the horde games I play, the fabricator drops and it never moves again. Its placement needs to be close to the a back wall that has the least amount of entry points with the longest range to engage enemies as well as enough space that you're not bunched together to be collected by a drop shot. Now I say wall, but when, what I really mean is a backstop where things can't spawn behind you. 
if the back wall is one that boom shots and drop shots pass through instead of exploding and killing everyone even better that's important and once you see it you'll know what i'm talking about it also doesn't hurt to have a ceiling or a low entry point for lob shots and guardians who want to sneak into your base don't be afraid to try new positions either between rounds you may be tempted to go to one of those ammo boxes there's usually two hiding on the map and there isn't a lot to go around for five people so before you start grabbing boxes, try to practice with your scavenging skills. Uh, double dipping, grabbing both ammo boxes is highly frowned upon. And once the heavy and engineer are too busy having fun on the turrets, you'll find ammo no problem just sitting around. Another trick is marking your opponents. Don't ask. Just mark them. Some class skills cards boost on marked enemies such as those required by the heavies, you know, your most important units. And the devastating guys behind the turrets so just don't ask just mark my last suggestion is not to face off against big opponents they are slow and have a tough time moving so get in behind them and shoot them before they can turn around uh, debilitating their ability to react and nothing says you're awesome like seeing someone run into a room drop a scion by themselves and then run out completely unscathed so I'm going to give you some other cool ideas uh, that you may not be aware of to think outside the box in your playing style to have a little bit more fun. So let's say you want to be a sniper, but you get more ladies being a scout. It's no problem. Try being a scout sniper. Remember that any class can use any weapon. Well, early on, that M bar gets dropped pretty fast, and you can pick it up, and it is devastating. Sure, it's hard to use, but while you're waiting for that last enemy, you're not doing anything important, are you? Besides, that shotgun is your real powerhouse weapon, so your secondary weapon can be whatever you want it to be. But trust me, popping heads can get addictive, and chicks love it. The last one is what I call the light mass strike, and unlike the UIR, the COG didn't originally have the Hammer of Dawn. They instead had the light mass missile. Uh, that you've seen in judgment well if you're bored and you want to see something cool set it up the following remember we spoke earlier how the mortar strike sucks well the heavy has another ability called ping damage um, and that's a boost that does his damage if en enemies are pinged well the sniper has the ability that he can hit the fabricator and ping every enemy on the map so first have the sniper ping the map and then have a heavy call in the mortar strike and you've just re recreated the famous last light mass strike from the Judgment game with Barrett and Cole. Congratulations. And that's the final beauty of Horde. Horde classes and hard class cards. You make the class you want and you have fun. And by all means, try new ideas and new combinations. You'd be amazed at all the cool things you'll find. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Oh, and if you have any ideas, you have those comments below and that pesky like button to get out of the way. And I appreciate it. And if you feel like it, subscribe for some more great content. Good hoarding and see you later. Bye. So, what are we doing tomorrow? Earlier today, your gears successfully deployed the light mass bomb. We have destroyed the enemy stronghold. This war has exacted a heavy price from all of us. It has torn our world apart. But you have my word that we will rise again.